Hey everybody, welcome back to the farm. It's hot, 91 degrees here. With the humidity and the heat index, it feels like it's 96. And we are right in the middle of the heat of the day. I brought the girls over. I fed everybody real quick, brushed them, checked them for scars, cuts, bruises, nicks, ticks, all of the above, and got them back out on the pasture as quick as I could to get them out of this hot barn with these walls being, you know, three sides of solid wall and nothing open at the top, it gets pretty stagnant in here. I've got these household box fans up here that I just picked up at Walmart. They're just Lasco and they do not move enough air. So today when I get home, there'll be some aluminum stall fans waiting for me in the mail from UPS. They are all aluminum, sealed motor, and they move 4,700 cubic feet of air per minute. And I'm gonna have four of them in here. These uh, Lasco box fans, they worked great at my last barn, but my barn was open on the top and they worked fine because the air could come through, but they just don't move the air. And I looked and these do not even have a cubic feet per minute rating. So these things are going bye-bye and the new aluminum fans are coming in. But what I want to talk to you about this week is remember last week we we put shoes on Jewel, the big Percheron mare. And you remember we used this clipped size eight shoe on her. If you didn't see that video, it'll be linked at the end of this video. But you notice this shoe is just completely slick. It's just completely flat. And when these horses are out in the pasture or in the woods, typically they're okay. If they're gonna be pulling logs and stuff, you know, they'll have a big cleat back here. But if they're just out in the pasture doing work, you know, just general purpose pleasure work, you know, just a slick shoe is fine. The problem is when they step onto concrete or asphalt, and I'm not saying in every single application because there are some concretes and some asphalts where these will not slip. But as a general rule, when a horse of any size steps onto concrete or asphalt with a slick shoe, the shoe slips out from under them like they're on ice. So there needs to be some sort of a traction additive put on the shoe. And what we're gonna put on there is drill tech. And drill tech is basically a welding rod and you can see it's all rough. And basically what it is, it's built out of flux and it has shards, little pieces real sharp of carbide. Sometimes there'll be a combination of carbide and borium and sometimes you'll see these referenced as borium sticks. They're borium sticks and drill tech are two different things, but you will see both of them. But sometimes you can get sticks that have borium and carbide in them. This stick just has carbide in it, but it's made of flux. And what happens is, as you put a traction additive up here on the toe of the shoe, and then you put traction additive back here on the heel. And then when they step onto asphalt or concrete, their feet don't slip out from under them. This is actually harder than the shoe. So this will outlive the shoe. You can put it on, I've seen people put it on in a bead, they'll weld a bead across here, and then they'll weld a bead down here. And then some people will put one dot down here and some people will put two dots down here some people put three dots up here. Some people put two dots up here. There's no rhyme or reason. There's no right, there's no wrong. Just depends on how much traction you need for your application. Once this stuff is put on this shoe, as I said, this will be stronger than the shoe and will outlive the shoe. We'll be able to get about two to three resets on this shoe, meaning that when the farrier comes back in seven weeks, we'll take this shoe off, trim her, and put this exact shoe back on her. That's one reset. 
And we should be able to get two to three resets before this shoe is so worn out on the toe and they're so thin up here that we have to get a new shoe. So the way Drill Tech is applied is it's applied with an oxyacetylene torch. And you just heat the, the area up until it gets, you know, orange and super hot. And then once it's super hot, then you introduce the rod and the rod will melt. And then you can use the tip of the rod to kind of shape it into what you want, whether it be a circle or if you want to lay out a bead or whatever. I think if you lay out a bead like that, you know, it, it can be pretty wasteful. And if you lay out a, a large bead like that. So I think the farrier that will be here, I think he's just gonna do dots. <laughs> they use drill tech on all their buggy horses in Indiana. And this comes in different grades. It comes in a mild course, a medium course, and then a full course. So just depending again on how much traction you need depends on what coarseness you get. There's no right or wrong. You know, if you buy a rod and put it on there and your horse isn't getting enough traction, then you either need to put more on the shoe or you need to get a more coarse stick. If they're too coarse and they're getting too much traction, as in a buggy horse that goes very fast down the road all the time, they want a little bit of slippage in their shoe because they don't, their horses are going so fast that they don't want to, uh, you know, stress their joints any more than they already are because they're putting a lot of stress on them, just running them down the roads like they do. And so they want a little bit of slippage that is still gonna grip, but it's gonna slip just a little bit just to give their joints a little bit of relief. In my application, I'm gonna be going so slow, I wanna get as much traction as I can get. So this is a coarse rod. So you wanna get it to where it looks like it's almost, and the section's almost kind of bubbly a little bit. Or when you're melting, when it's actually melting. Like that. That's what I like it's a little bit. And it looks And I stack my shoes on top of each other. That way, my heat will go all the way through, and I'm not having to. It'll be a lot quicker to dress the next one. Right, I'm going to grab me that bottle of float.
Okay, so you saw that he used two dots and then one dot. He said in his experience that that is enough traction and he's been doing the Amish horses, you know, pretty much his whole life. So I'll go with his judgment. I've got no reason to doubt him. If I see that once I get her out on the road, if we don't have enough traction, then I can tell him next time and we can add another dot or another dot. But he said that, you know, we should have plenty with that right there. There's different type of traction you can get. Like I said, there's some shoes that are folded over right here and there's a big cleat right here. And so it looks almost like they got on a high heel, just a big lug back here on the back. And then there's screw in cleats that you can screw in like a golfer or a football player could screw cleats into their, into their cleats or studs into their cleats rather. You can screw them in here. And then you can even get rubber shoes. The mounted police in all of your major cities, they all wear rubber shoes. But where these cost about $17 a pair, those rubber shoes that the police department wear, they're about $58 a pair, $55 a pair. So a significant cost increase to get the rubber horseshoes versus this. So the next time the farrier's here, I'll show you the reset and I'll show you how the drill tech is wearing compared to the shoe. And that'll be in seven weeks time. But right now I'm gonna get out of here. I'm gonna go get those fans, be ready to install those in the morning and get this barn a little bit cooler. So until then, I appreciate you watching and remember who you are. Be kind to those around you. Stand up for what you believe in.